Today on Studio G, we have the latest on the shooting that occurred on Black Friday. And four people are dead and many others injured after a train derailed in New York. And reporter Jordan Hardy updates us on UNLV football. All this and more coming up on Studio G. Welcome to Studio G. I'm Honey Love. And I'm Farron Enos. Four people died Sunday morning after a train derailed in New York. 67 people were injured and 11 of them are in critical condition. The incident took place around 7 a.m. after the Metro North train derailed after near Spiton Dyville Station in the Bronx. The Metro was coming around a sharp curve when at least two trains flipped on their sides while the others were twisted. I heard this horrible whooshing sound kind of like a plane crash. It was very disturbing, very loud. One of the loudest noises I've ever heard locally. I heard a lot of crunching and grinding and I started seeing stars in front of my eyes and I thought, my goodness, is this the end? Investigators are unsure how fast the train was going when the incident occurred. The investigation is ongoing and the NTSB will have to review data from the event's recorders that were recovered from the scene. The names of those who have died have been identified as Donna Smith, James Lavelle, James Ferrari, and Anne Kasuk. We will keep you updated as soon as these details emerge. A Black Friday shopper was shot. According to Metro Police, a man bought a big screen television from the Target near Flamingo Road and Maryland Parkway when the incident took place around 945 on Thursday. As he was unloading the TV from his car near an apartment complex, he was approached by a man. The shopper was then shot in the leg and the gunman left the scene. According to witnesses, the TV was left on the street after the shooting. The victim was transported to Sunrise Trauma with non-life-threatening injuries. New details are emerging about the car crash that killed actor Paul Walker this weekend. This video posted on YouTube shows the scene shortly after the crash happened. The driver of the car was later identified as 38-year-old Roger Rodas, a well-known driver of the Porsche Driver Series. Besides Paul Walker being a star in the Fast and Furious franchise, the two were friends that were highly involved in racing. The filming of the seventh installment of Fast and Furious was underway at the time of the accident. Investigators now believe drag racing may have been involved. The 40-year-old actor is survived by his 15-year-old daughter, Meadow. A developing sport involving street bikes is receiving tough criticism from police officers. Reporter Bree Bradley has more. I think that there's a lot of people involved in creating laws and rules that don't understand people like me. Las Vegas native Chris Higdon has been competing in street bike stunt competitions for four years. Chris is currently the 13th best stunt bike rider in the nation. Now a rider for multiple big name sponsors in the pro class, Chris is in search to add yet another championship to his name. There's only one thing that stands in his way, however, a location to practice without being stopped by the police. I've been stopped countless times, um, probably four or five times a week at some points. Stunt bike competitors are finding it more difficult to find areas in which they can practice. Empty and abandoned parking lots such as this one are becoming occupied once again around the valley and brick walls are keeping riders like Chris on the outside. Most of the time the police are called because someone is complaining about noise or they're complaining that they're scared to drive past us. We're gonna come flying off off the parking lot and crash into the street and kill people or something. Lieutenant Jeff Green of the UNLV Police Department says it's not so much the sound ordinance or onlookers fear as it is the safety for the riders. The first priority, laws and ordinances that they're breaking, but I'm also fairly sure that the officers will be concerned about the bike riders' safety. 
of moving violations and safety or just a preconceived judgment of the up and coming sport, both parties agree that this way of riding a street bike isn't going anywhere and hopefully can come to a mutual agreement between both athlete and authority. I see it as not a trend. I think it's going to be around for a while. Eventually one day the sport may grow enough to have a location where, you know, you come sign a waiver, pay 10 bucks and ride all day, you know, be legitimately not illegal. For Studio G, I'm Bree Bradley. Despite the difficulty of finding locations to practice on stunt bikes, riders anticipate a new facility to be built in 2014 to help accommodate the growth of their sport. And on to some lighter news. Today is Cyber Monday. It is expected that more people will shop today than they did on Black Friday. According to Adobe Systems Incorporated, it is expected for shoppers to spend $2.2 billion with a 15% increase from last year. Today is also expected to set a new record with shoppers visiting over 2,000 retail sites half a trillion times. This year, one-third of the Cyber Monday shoppers will make their purchases on mobile devices. After the break, Christina Davies gives us our seven-day forecast. Stay with us. Your community's farmer's market. Welcoming. Lively. Friendly. A place where neighbors and friends come together to celebrate their community. With over 50 vendors, organic, sustainable, fresh produce are available just for you. Support and buy local at Fresh 52. And the weather in the East Coast continues to cause accidents. Freezing rain in central and northern Massachusetts caused several accidents on Sunday morning. According to CNN, police stated that the icy roads caused a crash between 70 cars and three tractor trailers. 30 people involved in the accident suffered minor injuries. The accident caused the interstate to, in Worcester to be closed. Let's check in with Christina Davies to see what's in store for our weather this week. Christina. Good afternoon, I'm Christina Davies, and right now we are at 58 degrees and we have low winds of three miles per hour. Now if we take a look, we have a high of 58, a low of 43. Um, we're about around average, um, but in 1940, we were at 78 and in 1948, a uh, low of 24. Uh, sunset will be at 426. Now, if we take a look at our current weather in Reno, it's 62, Tonopah 51. If we look over here, uh, it's 28 in Durango and 33 in Grand Junction. Now, if we take a look at our satellite radar in Montana and um, Idaho, we have a lot of rain and snowfall. And over here in North Dakota, down to Wisconsin, Michigan, there's a lot of snow. Uh, for tomorrow's forecast, we will see snow in Fargo and some rain in St. Paul, so keep an eye out for that. And if we take a look at our extended forecast, uh, Tuesday 64, Wednesday 50, Thursday 43, Friday 47, and we'll keep in the high 40s and then go into the 50s. Well, that's all the weather I have for you today. Stay tuned for more news. My name is James Grant. King Louie here. This is Jennifer. Crystal May McGuerza. I'm Savannah. I'm Zoe here. This is your boy Miles Lowe. Christian FGY. Kaylin Hype. And I'm Jay Luna. My Mind's Music. Gonzo Radio. Combox Radio. Join us for happy hour. Miles Lowe Midweek Show. Ill Vibe Theory. On KUNV. 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 KUNV HD2. 91.5 The Rebel. Broadcast on Revcast.com. I think what a lot of people don't realize, we provide 1,300 hot meals a day through three of our kitchen. We have about 650 people sleeping in beds provided by the Salvation Army every night. We have 127,000 of people that we touch every year. It's huge and people have no idea 
that we do more than have thrift stores and ring bells at Christmas. Are you ever curious about how much texting is good for you and your partner? Well, a new study has looked at how texting affects romantic relationships. Reporter Elena Ledbetter has more. Texting today has become a common form of communication, and when lobbies such as these fill up with college students, it's no surprise the majority of them are looking down on their cell phones. But a recent study has shown that texting in relationships can be more harmful than helpful. Brigham Young University led a study where they tested to see how effective texting was for young adults in committed relationships. They found women text more for stability, while men text more because they were unsatisfied. For UNLV student Angelina Morales and her fiancé Jacob Yarbrough, they consider texting as a quick and easy dialogue than their main form of communication. It offers you a, you know, a constant in your relationship. I don't see it as much of a thing of growth, to be really honest. Yeah, texting has a limit. It is, I believe that if, you know, it's used for a specific level of type of communication and then at that point, you can only you can only text so much. UNLV's assistant director for the Department of Communications, Jennifer Guthrie, believes this study is informative but not applicable for all romantic relationships. Texting in relationships can be very complex. It's all in how the romantic partners use it, how they're satisfied with it. Is it efficient? Does it make them feel satisfied? Or does it not? The study shows shorter messages such as I heart you are better to send over text while big topics are saved for face to face. Because I mean a simple K can, you know, for one person it means K I'm so excited, you know, but you know if she reads K for me it means K I don't want to talk right now. <laughs> Texting isn't always a bad form of communication, but as the study shows, nothing beats a good old-fashioned phone call. Reporting for Studio G, I'm Elena Ledbetter. Hey, Zach. Do you text a lot? I actually do. I don't think that texting's bad. I can get what I need to say out there real quick and keep going with my day. Oh, not me. <laughs> I'm with Elena on that one. Pick up the phone and just call me if you need to talk to me. <laughs> well, speaking of phones, today there's all different types of technology out there making its way, making it a whole lot easier to find that perfect match. Reporter Katie McLean has a story. Into any sort of dating, first impressions are everything, but they can also be really intimidating. But when it comes to the first date, those first impressions could be somebody's worst nightmare. But in today's society, dating has actually become a lot easier because instead of going out, you can actually stay in the privacy of your own home. It's just more comfortable for people. They get to know the personality of the person and physical attributes don't come into play right away mask or a window between you and the real person. It also depends on your personal preference. Like if you want something more detailed or would you like just a simple yes or no? A lot of, you know, online stuff, you know, is made up, accentuated, exaggerated, whereas you can get a better sense of somebody through nonverbals if you meet them personally rather than you know, just an online profile. David Rosales met his girlfriend of five years online, and even though he was skeptical at first, he says he'd never regret it. And we went on our first date, and I knew she was the one for me. Those kinds of things that I think will keep real meeting are going out to clubs or meeting through church activities or other organizations and associations going for a long Online dating sites such as these have helped thousands of people worldwide find their perfect match. So if you try one of them out, you might find some love in your stocking this holiday. For Studio G, I'm Katie McLean. Even though choosing a potential partner might seem a bit overwhelming, there are plenty of other dating sites out there for everyone's personal preference. After the break, Heather Fairberger will sit down with UNLV graduate Sean McCollum. Don't click that mouse. We'll be right back. DECA promotes personal and professional development through competitive events, community involvement, and leadership development 
I joined DECA because I wanted to get out of my comfort zone. So I got to meet people, network, and definitely work on my public speaking. To join DECA, it's a very simple process. You have to pay a $25 membership fee. You can either come to our next meeting, our website, which is unlvdeca.co.vu. We're open to all majors who are interested in business, finance, or hospitality related fields. My name is James Grant. King Louie here. This is Jennifer. Crystal May McGuerza. I'm Savannah. This is Zoe here. This is your boy Miles Lowe. Christian FGY. Kaylin Hype. And I'm Jay Luna. My Mind's Music. Gonzo Radio. Combox Radio. Join us for Happy Hour. Miles Lowe Midweek Show. Ill Vibe Theory. On KUNV. 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 KUNV HD2. 91.5 The Rebel. Broadcast on RevCast.com. Welcome back from the break. Today we're joined with UNLV graduate Sean McCollum. Hi Sean, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure, thank you. Uh, welcome back to UNLV's campus. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, you graduated very recently, didn't you? Graduated in May, yes, this past May, and um, just picked up a job at KSNV Channel 3. I've been there since August, and it's been quite the experience so far. And because you did come out of the journalism program, right? Yes, graduated with a bachelor in journalism, a minor in communication studies, and uh, so far it's been a tremendous help in my field of uh, employment. Now, uh, you did just say you got a job at Channel 3. What do you do there? I actually am a production assistant for now. I work the cameras primarily, do a little teleprompter here and there, and I'm currently training on audio, but for the most part I do all the cameras um, for the morning show, the, uh, the studio cameras, and that's been a tremendous experience so far. I've learned a lot, and I'm always learning more each and every day being at KSNV. Uh, and so, you know, what is that like? What is the process from being a recent graduate to getting a job like that and, and even just starting out? You know, what, it, what was your process to get the job at Channel 3? Um, my, well, my main thing is I'd say persistence. Um, you know, just keep in contact, keep, you know, bugging, keep bugging. Persistence is the key. Graduated in May. All summer I was jobless, so throughout the whole summer, um, June, July, and even into somewhat the first week of August, I was just searching, searching, and finally I found an opening at Channel 3, Case and V. And um, like I said, persistence is the key. So make sure you keep into contact. Um, you get those resumes out. You can never have too many resumes, and you can never ever, um, you know, have a perfect resume. I like to say you're always constantly working on it, and just you know, just keep talking to employers and making sure you're staying into contact with them, and that they know your name, and especially they know your face. And, and that's great advice for graduates. I mean, mo some of us, not most of us, some of us are graduating in a couple of weeks. So, you know, for yourself, what w what did you do in order to get that job? You said, you know, you were out of a job for the whole summer. Yes. Well, what I did, first of all, um, I was hitting up every local news station online, actually, on the computer. So I looked at, you know, Channel 8, Channel 13, Channel 3, and I saw that Channel 3 had an opening in early June for a production assistant job. Read the basic job description, which included uh, camera work, a little bit of computer graphics, teleprompter, but mainly, you know, studio cameras and being able to help with lighting here and there. I applied for that, and um, I just kept in contact with the employer. I was very persistent. They brought me in for a second interview. That is when I showed them my resume, and about a week or two later, they called me and gave me the great news that I got the job. So just staying in touch with them is key, and, um, you know, don't be afraid to call and check up. That's the main thing. Um, if you haven't heard from them, I'd say give it about three to four days. Call them and or email them to let you show that tells them that you're interested in the job and that you really want to be there. And then most employers like that. Absolutely. So. Now, did you just uh, try to look for work locally or did you actually try out of state or do you have plans of eventually going out of state? Um, eventually, uh, if I could, I, I ultimately I'd like to become a reporter. So if anything opens up anywhere in the, across the, the nation, I'd love to take it. As far as my job search, I only searched locally and I was lucky and fortunate enough to find employment here in town at Channel 3. Um, but yeah, I would like to expand my horizons and, you know, getting a job across country is, is completely open for me, especially now that I'm done with school. I've got a little bit of experience and my foot's in the door. That would be awesome to see you somewhere and, and know that you came from here. So you actually are a Studio G alum. Yes. Uh, you know, your experience from here on campus, how does that play into your your job now? Um, it is a tremendous help, and I cannot stress this enough. 100% uh, what all I learned at Studio G and here at UNLV um, was a tremendous help. Getting my foot in the door, knowing the cameras, um, as far as the movements, the different types of shops, or um, excuse me, shots, and even the audio, um, I, you know, it is a, a tremendous experience. And without that, I would be, I'd feel a step behind. It's, it's something that you can learn and grasp rather quickly, but having the broadcasting experience and going through the journalism program 
here at Greenspun Hall and at UNLV was a tremendous help, and I cannot stress that enough. And it really did, um, you know, help me in getting the job, especially and with the training process that we do. And and uh, so uh, you already went off on a little bit of advice for those of us graduating, but you know, do you have any any other advice? Anything that you know we feel like we need to be doing at least to get our foot in the door to start off? Um, well, personally, my best advice I can give is you know don't get up, don't give up, don't don't ever give up. Always be persistent. You can never learn um, too much. You know, you're always learning. Each and every day is a different learning experience for us as far as our careers. Um, just take in as much knowledge as you can. Have a will, have a passion to learn, and never give up on your dreams. And if you want to stay in the journalism and or broadcast field, uh, there's nothing too small or nothing too big. So just, just dream big and be hmm. persistent. That is great advice. Yes. And I mean, and how important is it for real? I mean, is that something you're continuing working on? Is something to show off your skills? Yes, I've always had a passion for broadcast, and by working at a news studio here in town, it has just made my, um, my, my passion grow, and that is something I will never give up on. Not quite where I want to be. I'm training for audio. I'd love to become a reporter someday, but I'm happy where I'm at right now, and it only goes up from here. Well, Sean, thank you so much, and good luck. Yeah, thank you for having me. We look forward to uh, uh, seeing where you're going after this. Thank you. Stay tuned for more news after this break. This is your house, too. Located on the campus of UNLV on Brussels Street sits Housel House, the Center for Social Justice. A place where everyone can participate, explore cultural identity, share different experiences, and learn leadership skills. No judgments. You are accepted, you are important, and you are welcomed. Stand up, speak out, and change the world. You drinking tonight? No, not tonight. Shh, like, give me a couple beers. <laughs> you want some? Mm, no, stop. Come on, just stop. take a drink. No. It's just a drink. I have to drive this home. Yeah, Can I'm you good. even walk in a straight line? Yes, you want me to show you? Oh, yeah, you're good. Man, what are you talking wow. about? I got this. Just give me the keys, please. I, mean, I, don't, I ain't drunk, though. UNLV football had their final home game this season against San Diego State. Reporter Jordan Hardy has a story. The Rebels caught the attention of many this season as they made history left and right. A four-game winning streak, a winning road record, and bowl eligibility. All of this for the first time in 13 years. And to top it off, a winning record of 7-5. and five. The Rebels were victorious over San Diego State on senior night with a final score of 45-19. to 19. The fans were loud and the team was hungry to secure their postseason position. Good exclamation point on it. I mean, it was kind of a dominating win and... and uh, I'm just, I'm proud of our guys, I'm proud of our assistant coaches. Receiver Devontae Davis was the star of the game, catching four touchdown passes from quarterback Caleb Herring. And on the defensive side, seniors Tyler Gaston and Tim Hassan held down the fort and are proud of how far their team has come. I feel like it's great, you know, for, for us and for the city. Um, people have been down on the team for a while, and, and it's just to finally get over that hump. 13 years, it, it, it's just a great feeling. Coming from 2 and 11, like so many times where like your confidence is just battered. So just nonstop resilience and believing in relentlessness when it comes to you know, positivity. It's just so rewarding. A team that never gave up may be the team to look out for in the future. For Studio G, I'm Jordan Hardy. Head coach Bobby Houck recently resigned his contract for three more years, and the Rebels' bowl game announcement will be December 8th. Finding a true passion for something you love isn't as always as easy as it sounds. Reporter Jordan Har Harrison met up with one local who hopes he can make a difference in people's lives through his love for fitness. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, more than one-third of U.S. adults are obese. 
Health conditions like strokes, heart diseases, and type 2 diabetes are some of the leading causes of preventable death. Personal trainer CJ Jones believes that staying fit is the best way to limit these conditions. I believe it helps your overall confidence in, in your life. So you feel better about yourself. You can walk high, taller, you don't have to worry about anybody calling you fat or she out of shape, or you, and you just feel better. Like you can walk out your house and don't have to worry about, oh, I need to cover up, I need to do this. You just feel better and you don't gotta worry about doctor bills, taking all these medications. While CJ studied engineering at UNLV, he discovered that his heart wasn't really in it. That's when he decided that he needed to make a change. The reason I chose this career path is because I, one day I woke up and I said, what can I do to help others and also love what I'm doing? And I just one day I was at the gym just working out. I'm like, why don't I do this? I love fitness. I love to see people get results. Why not just help train people and help them with diets and things like that? Many people struggle with staying motivated to exercise. Having a personal trainer is one way to help eliminate the laziness. It definitely helped me get into the gym and become more active and motivated. Cause like, once you like try to work out, you make more excuses. Like, I'm tired. I don't want to go. Uh, I'll just eat this. It's okay. But like working out with him, it's like I can't let him down. Like, I'm paying him this. I'm not gonna waste my money. I'm not gonna let him down. So he definitely helped me motivate myself and get active. I feel better about myself, more confident, my wind is up, my eating is getting a little bit better, still working on it, <laughs> but like all around fitness because CJ is helping me, I have to do PTs for the Air Force, so I'm like getting ready and I feel more confident that I can do it. CJ receives the most satisfaction when he knows that he has helped change someone's life in a positive way. Each person I can reach to make it better, rather I'm training them, help them with diets or just saying eat right or just telling them what to do to make it healthier, I just feel like I'm helping somebody better their tomorrow. If you're interested in training with CJ Jones for an affordable price, email him at cjjonesfitness at gmail.com. Well, it's that time of year again when Christmas lights are being hung throughout the valley. Reporter Ashley Schaefer has more. Thanksgiving is over and the holiday decorating in Las Vegas has just begun. Electrician Travis Mason gave us some pointers when applying your Christmas lights. Always plug them in before you install to make sure all the lights are working properly. Um, inspect the cords before you plug them in to make sure there's no bare wire showing. With Las Vegas's weather always changing, are there certain things we need to take into precaution when applying these lights? Most new Christmas lights are approved for uh, wet or damp locations, so you can have them outside and it's not going to be a problem if there's rain or snow in certain cases. What kind of lights should we use? If you're worried about cost efficiency, LEDs are a great way to go. They don't, they don't pull as much on your power bill. What safety tips do you take with your children? Our kids only do things that are reachable for them, and if they do have to go on a ladder, we make sure that we hold on to the ladder for them so that they don't reach too high and the ladder doesn't tip. When applying your favorite holiday lights, make sure to use proper safety precautions. For Studio G, I'm Ashley Schaefer. Thanks, Ashley. Make sure to follow these safety tips when you're decorating for this year. Have you hung your Christmas lights? I haven't. I actually need to go buy a tree. I have a fake one that I recycle every year. It's great. <laughs> I actually live in an apartment, so I need a really small little tree. Yeah, just get you a little <laughs> six-foot one. It'll be fine. Well, that's all the news we have for you today. I'm Honey Love. And I'm Farininos. Stay tuned for tomorrow for more Studio G, and have a great day, Las Vegas.